Hmm, laptops. Nowadays, there is a huge variety of laptops for every need, but when it comes to the decent battery life and pricing, it can get well above 1000 bucks. Motherboards with CPUs like Intel Core i3 or AMD Ryzen 3 and above will do a great job. So let's break the price down. Motherboard, 150 to 300 bucks. Batteries are not that expensive. This battery pack costed me like 60 bucks and it will last five times longer than the normal cylindrical cells. Let's add 100 bucks more for chargers, materials, cables, etc. And in this video, we will find out if we can actually build a decent laptop under 500 bucks. Also, we will go through the process of disassembling any generic laptop. Let's begin. First things first, let's see if our laptop is working and we can use its components. Perfect, it powers on. Now, to disassemble any laptop, we need to remove all visible screws. Keep an eye for that rubber thing, because some of them are hidden underneath it. And here is a pro tip. You can simply stick them nearby like this and you will not lose them. Before we proceed touching any electronic components, it's essential to disconnect the battery. And if in your case the battery is inside the housing, unplug it as soon as it becomes visible. Now we need to open the laptop. And opening it is not hard, especially if you don't care about damaging the housing. But if you do care, you can use some pry tools like this or plastic pry tools like this. Once you feel that the lid is not longer attached, you can simply lift it up. Sometimes you will need to apply a bit of force, but if you need to apply too much force, I guess some screws are not taking out. And here we have the motherboard, revealing all its components. This is a Wi-Fi module, GPU video memory chips, CPU and GPU are under this heat pipe because they generate a significant amount of heat. This is RAM, this is the CMOS battery that powers laptop clock if the battery dies. This SSD contains your system and this HDD contains all your data. And here you can see a lot of empty space wasted because the CD-ROOM should be there. And this brings us to the proposal. It is very simple. I'm going to use one terabyte SSD for everything, so it occupies less space. Half of the laptop will be occupied with a new battery. A new metallic housing will be proposed to avoid problems with cheap plastic housings. So from the outside, it will be a completely different laptop, but from the inside, it will be the same laptop we assembled before. We'll continue by separating the screen from the bottom part of the case. Remove all the screws that attach the hinge and carefully disconnect all the cables. In this case, we will remove the Wi-Fi antenna cable, display flex cable and the charger cable. Depending on your laptop, you may have more or fewer cables to disconnect. You can use a screwdriver to lift the hinge and now you can effortlessly separate the screen from the rest of the laptop. So, now it's time to disconnect all the ribbon cables from the motherboard. The widest ribbon cable corresponds to the keyboard, while this one is for the touchpad. This type of the connector is used for speakers. In my case, the SSD disk isn't properly secured with screws. And here we disconnect the additional USB board and the HDD ribbon cable. With all that done, we can now remove all the screws holding the motherboard in place. And I almost forgot to disconnect the power button. Once we have disconnected it, lifting up the motherboard becomes easy. And don't worry about holding the fan like that, it won't cause any damage. Here we have the power button PCB and its ribbon cable. Next, we'll remove the touchpad buttons, the HDD and the HDD SATA connector. In this case, the speakers aren't screwed in, so they can be easily lifted up. And lastly, we need to remove this small PCB with an additional USB. So, all the parts have been removed from the housing, and now it's time to tackle the trickier task, the screen. Most screens are secured behind the plastic frame, which can be removed by gently pulling from the inside with your fingers. 
Please avoid using any hard objects because they might damage the screen. And in some cases you might find screws in the corners. Also take them out and then take out the frame. Once the frame is removed, you will see more screws holding the structural frame and the hinges. Remove them and you will see some cables going to the camera, cables going to antennas, and you should be careful with them because they are quite thin. Now you can turn the screen upside down and remove the connector which is in the back. And this brings us to the small theory lesson about screens. So basically there is this screen resolution where you have to waste a lot of time scrolling around the screen to be able to fit the picture inside the frame. Yes, I'm talking about 1366 by 768 pixels, aka WXGA. Now, if we compare the DPI of WXGA to Full HD screen, we will get these numbers. 15.5 inch WXGA screen will get 145 ppi, and in the case of a 14 inch but Full HD screen, we will get 157.35 ppi. That means that we will have 50% more information on a smaller screen. Here, take a look. This is a normal Google search on WXGA resolution, and this doesn't even fit. And here is the same search on a Full HD screen, the one I'm going to use for this laptop. You clearly see the difference, right? Now that we have removed all the components, it's time to assemble the laptop on the table and see how long the battery will last. We'll start by placing the motherboard on our table and insert 16 gigs of RAM. To secure the board and ensure that all components are well connected, we'll use tape for now. Next, we'll insert a new disk. Currently, it's 128 GB one. It is easier to connect the antenna to the Wi-Fi module first and then connect the module to the motherboard. Also, let's connect the speakers to see if the sound will work properly. Here comes the screen. We need to handle it with care as we connect it gently. Keep in mind that the camera shares the same connector with the screen and here we have everything connected to the motherboard. And this brings us to the batteries. As I said before, I'm going to use these 5 cells of 3.7 volts and 10,000 mAh batteries. When fully charged, they should provide a voltage of 21 volts. And here you may wonder, if we multiply 3.7 by 5, we don't get 25. So, let me explain. While a nominal voltage of a battery is for 3.7 volts, when it is fully charged, it will output 4.2 volts. And 4.2 multiplied by 5 will give us 21 volts. On the other hand, the battery is considered discharged when it has less than 3.3 volts and 3.3 multiplied by 5 will give us 16.5. Now let's test each cell separately and see which voltage we have. Good, so they all charged and now let's see where I'm going to connect them. I'm going to connect them to the DC port and this will guarantee the maximum performance but Windows will not be able to show me the remaining charge. If we check the supply voltage that goes to the DC port, it reads 19.5 volts. Therefore, we need to convert our 21 volt to 19.5. However, keep in mind that when the battery is close to empty, the voltage will drop to 18 volts, which is not enough to power the laptop. So we need to find a transformer which will do the two tasks simultaneously. It will be able to step up the voltage and step down the voltage. And after some research in AliExpress, I found this one and actually it works pretty well. I've also modified the original cable to be compatible with the boost and bug converter. When connected, the charging indicator confirms the power is going to the motherboard. Now let's turn the laptop on, turn some Full HD video and get back to it when it runs out of power. I will be timing it using the nostalgic iPhone 4S running iOS 6. Nice! So we actually got 18 hours 40 minutes, more or less 19 hours. 
most probably if I turn on the energy saver it might work for more time but here is a comparison to other laptops available on the market. The next question is how long will it take to charge? I've purchased the charger especially for this project with a voltage of 21 volts and a current of 5 amps. It should automatically turn off once the battery reaches 21 volt and the light indicator should turn green. Hmm, let's investigate what produces this sound. There are no visible screws on the charger, so let's check under the stickers. And we found one. We open it up and discover a PCB with a fan and a cable. We plug it in and the buzzing sound becomes louder. I suspect it is coming from this transformer. It operates on the same principle as the big transformers outside of your house, which produces this humming noise. Essentially, there are two coils producing the electromagnetic field, and to enhance the efficiency, a ferromagnetic core was used inside. And this core is made of laminated sheets, which expand and contract, and therefore produce the humming noise. For more detailed explanation, you can check the mechanical engineering channel. These guys know their stuff. Anyway, we put the charger back together, a trusty iPhone is here to time the charging process. Let's see what happens when I connect the charger to the battery pack. I had some problems, it was charging and not charging, but it turns out the problem was in the connector. Now the connection is good and it charges well. So, the charging is uh, 6 hours, which is not that fast. But if we think about 24 hours a day, that it can work 18 hours and it takes 6 hours to charge per night, that becomes quite impressive. Thank you so much for watching until this point, and now let's discuss the problems and future upgrades for this project. I discovered that this charger charges the battery only up to 4.05 volts, so the charging needs to be improved. And also I thought that the charging needs to be faster, so let's see if we can get maybe 2 or even 1 hour of charging. You may have noticed that there was no keyboard shown in this video, because I'm still searching for the keyboard which will fit well the housing I'm going to produce. And the final part will be to adjust some components I used in this video, so they fit in the housing, because I want the laptop to be quite thin. In the next video I'm going to build the housing for that laptop and also I'm going to check if I can actually spend the whole day on one single charge. I'll see you there.